Episcopal Church here in Lake Worth Beach, Florida. We are so glad you are with us on this All Saints Day. Our service begins on page 355 of your Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open all desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And together we say, Glory, Glory to, to God, God in the highest and, and peace, peace to his people on earth. Lord God, God heavenly, heavenly King, King Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. 
You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have pre prepared for those who truly love you, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation, chapter 7, beginning at verse 9. After this, I, John, looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might. Be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Here ends the reading. Today's psalm is Psalm 34, found on page 627 of the Book of Common Prayer. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me, and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompasses all those who fear him, and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Fear the Lord, you that are his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants, and none will be punished who trust him.
A reading from 1 John chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it does not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. and see the goodness of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. There is a question that comes up a lot in our history in, and especially today, what does it mean to be a Christian? What can Christians do? What can Christians not do? What must Christians do? And especially in this political season, we hear people saying, oh, you must vote. If you're a faithful person, you must vote, and then they'll give you away. As though there is only one way to see faith because they have defined what is a Christian in a very small box. A Christian is people who think this. I, I wonder all the time what Jesus would say if he had known how many Christians would kill other Christians over the course of our history. Um, between Catholics and Protestants, I've even heard in the last year somebody say to me, are you Catholic or are you Christian? as those, those are different things. And I think what small boxes people make to put Jesus in. We made a decision at this church, for instance, decades ago, that our understanding of love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself meant that we respected the dignity of every human being and we welcomed and encouraged 
members of the LGBT community to come here and worship and know Christ and to be fully accepted into the body of Christ. We did not say if you have chosen a lifestyle or if you have um, some problem, we didn't, we didn't invite people in to fix them. We invited them in to walk with us in the way of Christ, all of us knowing that we need forgiveness, all of us knowing that we are not perfect, all of us walking and saying, you are made as fully in the image of Christ as I am. That there is no difference. That Jesus welcomes all. We have a sign in front of our church that said, that says everyone is welcome. And that means, of course, that we can't have a very, very narrow definition of Christian or what it means to follow Christ because certainly that would not include everyone. It includes some people who are already following Christ. It includes some people who may want to follow Christ and haven't figured that out yet. It includes some people who are here because their significant other follows Christ and they're just hanging around. And they're all welcome. They're all welcome to be in here, to be part of the journey, to consider the words, to love the music, to enjoy the art, to be here and to hear and to be welcomed and to be loved. That's what we think it means to be a Christian. We believe that to be a Christian means to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And of course, coming in the door and sitting in the pew doesn't make you a Christian, there's a, a joke that goes around all the time. You can stand in your garage, it won't make you a car. And the same is true with Christianity. Coming to church isn't the answer. It is following Jesus. It is, it is wanting to know God. It is to walk in a certain way. And I, I didn't put the book away because I wanted to go back and say what Jesus said. When Jesus talked about what it means to be a lover of God, what it means to be a follower. He said, these are people who are poor in spirit, and they mourn for those who mourn, and they're meek, and they hunger and thirst for righteousness. He said, they are pure in heart, and that they are peacemakers. He said that they are willing to be persecuted for righteousness' sake and that they are willing to be reviled for their beliefs. Now, I want you to understand one thing. Those aren't different kinds of people. They're not some who are meek and some who are mourned. That is the body together. That is the church in its wholeness. That we are people who, who are willing to be persecuted. We're willing to be called wrong. We're not willing to give up love in order to be thought right by somebody else, to have whatever power that might give us. We're not willing to turn our backs on people who are, are weak, are poor, or hungry, because they won't give us power, because we're doing it from love, not for desire. The only desire that we should strive for is the desire to love Jesus, the desire to follow more closely in Jesus' steps. At the end of our service, we will sing, or actually Ron will sing, as, as we do every week, um, this, this prayer that we will seek the Lord, that we will try to be, walk more closely with what the Lord asks us to do. And it's not about the election. And it's not about being right on every issue. It is about being loving. Now, one of the really important things about being loving that people sometimes overlook is that it's not a static response. What is loving to one person is not loving to another. There are people that you know who desire you to hug them as tight as you can. And there are other people who desire to nod at you from across the room, preferably six feet away, maybe 12. And that's before COVID. That was just who they were. There are people who would be delighted if you brought them a chocolate cake. And there are other people for whom chocolate cake is an abomination. They would never want such a thing. So the first part of loving, if you're going to love somebody, 
is you need to be in relationship with them. You need to know them. You need to know what it is to love. So as we are tri- striving to know God more clearly, to more, more closely, more deeply, more fully, to have God fill us, if we're going to love our neighbor as ourself, we must know our neighbor as well. To know the communities who are around us, not just the ones in our household, and not just the ones who look just like us, and not the ones who speak the same language we do, and not the same ones who are in the same economic class, and not the same people who have the same sexual orientation or political orientation, or even whether or not they um, believe our political beliefs. But people who are our neighbors that we're called to love, That is what it is. It's not about a static set of beliefs. It's not about a creed, though we will say the creed in a moment, and I like the creed. But it's not the, it doesn't encompass the fullness and fulsomeness of being Christian. To be Christian is to intentionally walk in love with God, with your neighbor, with the world. Ready to be corrected, ready to stand firm, and ready in meekness to meet all the things that come at us, even pandemics, with love and with hope and with faith. Amen. Even at home on your couch, I invite you to stand for our creed. We're on page 358 if you were following along in the prayer book. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Keeper of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. 
that they may be delivered from their distress. Almighty God, with whom still the spirits of these who die in the Lord and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity, we give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now find rest and refreshment. May we, with all who have died in the true faith of your holy name, have perfect fulfillment and bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We remember especially Catherine Coronato, Ciro Grillo, Stuart Herline, Tony Lasky, Paul Pearson, Paul Richardson, James Vincent, Noreen Boutet, Anthony Mosca, and Donna Westbrook. In the moment of silence, please add your own remembrances. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and the needs of others. Please remember in your prayers, Andy, Karen, Harriet, Clifford, Mildred, Elizabeth, Jim and Cindy, Susan, Henrietta, Paul, Gail, Robert, Matthew, Janet, Lee, Betty, Ed, Deborah, Beatrice, Khaled, Mary Elizabeth, Chuck, Nicole, Ruby, and Demetrius. I invite your petitions and your remembrances. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help, for you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Continuing on page 360 in your Book of Common Prayer, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, peace. And now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Our service continues on page 361 of your Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing. <laughs> against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us your, your peace. peace. The gifts of God. For the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. found on page 365 of your prayer book. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.
I am so glad you were with us this morning. We want to thank uh, Ron, our singer this morning. Thank you, Ron, beautifully done. And Joanne, beautiful at both the piano and the organ. And y'all don't know how hard that is to do both. And I want to thank Christy, who was with me on the altar. Thank you, Christy. You're She's welcome. She's back in the sacristy. Oh, she, she yelled, you're welcome. I don't know if you could hear or not. She might still have her mic on, though. So um, let's see, what do I want to tell y'all? First of all, I want to thank everyone who took part in last week's um, presentation by the Core Ensemble, the, uh, the Frida uh, Kahlo presentation. It was, it was spectacular, I thought, what the Core Ensemble did, and I'm so glad that so many of y'all came and were part of that, so thank you for that. Um, we are now in our book club. We're reading this wonderful book called Braiding Sweetgrass, and it is by a woman named Robin Wall Kimmerer, who is a Padawanami, a member of the Padawanami Nation and a botanist and talks about this, the life of uh, a Native American woman and the life of a scholar together. It is beautiful and I wish you would join us. We are, we're starting the second piece, I think it's called Tending Sweetgrass this week and uh, you would be welcome. We meet on Wednesdays at five o'clock on Zoom. Um, and if you haven't heard, we're back with in-person worship so we will be here this weekend and uh, the, the air conditioner is running. It is not fixed. Somebody thought, oh good, the air conditioner is all fixed. It's, it's patched together. <laughs> and we're hoping it will hold out until we get the new air conditioner installed. But uh, we have yet to have a full house completely. So if you wanna come, don't worry about, about there are too many people that you won't be allowed in. You probably will be. So um, we're doing 4.30 on Saturday, we're doing uh, 7.30 on Sunday, and we're doing 10 o'clock on Sunday. So please let us know at the office if you'd like to come and we will make room for you. Um, you can call the office, you can email the office, or you can use the website and all of those links are there with the, um, the video that you're seeing today. Um, let's see what else I needed to remind you of. I have my list. Because anybody who knows me knows me without a list, I will not remember. Um, be sure to visit our website. It's www.st, just SD, standrewslwb.com, and you can learn all the things that are going on. We have, uh, Rob's been working really hard to get the uh, website up to date and keeping it current. Um, every week I send out a little letter called Corey's Corner. I hope you will, um, read that and, uh, keep up with what's going on. Right now we are, we ask people that, to, th to imagine what this Christmas is going to look like because it's going to be different and we want it to be exciting and we want it to be beautiful and joyful and we want to reach out to our neighbors. So if you have thoughts about that, please share those with us. We are on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on YouTube as the official St. Andrew's Episcopal Church on YouTube. Um, at 11.15 today after this service, I'll be at my desk with, for a social time on Zoom and you can come into that. And every morning, Monday through Saturday, you can join me for morning prayer at 7.30. I am there with bells on, and Bama's husband, John Deal, has, has done the PowerPoint for us, so you can read the words. It's not just looking at me talk forever. Thank goodness. And, of course, lastly, I need to remind you, as I do every week, that we are in need of your financial support now more than ever. Um, because people aren't here, we, you know, we just we miss you, and, but it's more expensive to talk to you this way. I know it's, it's counterintuitive, but it's true. Um, but if you would consider today to, to give us your pledges and your, or your one-time gifts, you can go, go to our website and there's a Give Online button, or you can, of course, send, uh, he said cash or checks. Whoever wrote this said cash or checks through the U.S. mail. We don't send cash through the U.S. mail. We send checks through the U.S. mail. If you'd like to give cash, you could drop by the office and Ann would be happy to see you. Also, we are still today although if you brought them tomorrow, we'd probably be okay, uh, collecting toiletries for the farm workers um, through the Farm Workers Coordinating Council. Um, I have to tell you, I went to Target and I bought toiletries. And I always do this when I'm buying for something like this. I imagine one person, so I went and bought them shampoo, and I always picture a woman, because you know. And I bought shampoo and conditioner and, and body wash and lotion and uh, toothpaste and, toothpaste and, and deodorant and all this stuff. I cannot imagine how people who are unemployed or working in that kind of industry, how they pay for their toiletries each month, each day. It was, 
It was expensive. I was glad to do it, and I'd happily do it. But it was very eye-opening to me how much help people around us need. So please be generous. Thank you so much for being with us today. God bless, and I'll see you next week.